I hope that this one will be a quick, easy, and logical demonstration. Here at the bottom, once again, is a normal bone and a normal bone marrow. Here's the bone, here's the uh, trabeculae or spicules, and here is the bone marrow in between. Notice that even though we may not be able to identify every single type of cell in the bone marrow, all the stages of the hematopoiesis and uh, uh, specifically the myelopoiesis, uh, and erythropoiesis, we can tell that even at this power that it's a nice heterogeneous population of various cells. Every now and then we'll see a megakaryocytes sites like here. And we really notice that there's a kind of an evenly uh, dispersed distribution of fats between the bone marrow as well. Sometimes in areas there's a little more fat than others but generally speaking it's about a 50 to 50 ratio and when you look at these cells they are very heterogeneous to see elements of uh, myelopoiesis erythropoiesis and thrombopoiesis and that's no matter where you look in the marrow you see that kind of a pattern and a nice mixture between fat and uh, myeloid cells here's another bone marrow on the top notice like in the last case we have, uh, even at this power, a good mixture between fat and hematopoietic cells. It's about 50-50 as well. And if you look carefully, it looks like most of these cells are heterogeneous. So just from looking at a bone marrow and saying that these cells are heterogeneous and there's a 50-50 mixture of fat, that rules out a tremendous amount of diseases, even before you go in and look at the uh, uh, individual cells and look at ratios and so forth. Uh, but the one thing that you have to remember is to have the patience to look at everything. So here's marrow, here's marrow for all the right reasons. Here's bone, here's marrow, here's marrow. Here's an area where there's a little more fat than here, but generally the cells all look about the same. All these little red areas are uh, sinusoids or uh, blood spaces that the cells get released into. And we're still cruising along over here. And we could see marrow. And now we see something that doesn't look like marrow. There's an area here that doesn't look like here. There's some spaces, but they don't really look like fat spaces. And look at that includes this area as well. Well, let's uh, zoom in on it and see what we could see. Well, they don't look uh, really uh, completely heterogeneous. And furthermore, most of these cells look like they have vacuoles inside of them, like here, 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 like many, if not most of the cells. If you look enough, and you, as you know, hematopoietic cells should not have prominent vacuoles. Some of the plasma cell has a prominent Golgi, like possibly here, but these are big vacuoles, and uh, uh, even though they not form glands, whenever you see vacuoles inside of cells like that, you think of poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. And um, that's exactly what this is. It's a metastatic adenocarcinoma, poorly differentiated to the marrow. And your eye should be able to pick it up right away because here's normal marrow here. This is normal marrow here. And instantly, this clump and this nodule as well do not have fat spaces. They're not staining at all like the rest of the hematopoietic cells. And sure enough, when you zoom in on it, and we'll do that again, you can see that they do not look like hematopoietic cells. They look like they are epithelial cells that have a lot of little vacuoles in them, like a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma does. These are signet ring cells, aren't they? So that's one quick way to spot uh, metastatic carcinoma within a uh, bone marrow. Thank you very much.